The seemingly perpetual conundrum of renting versus owning a home is an enduring dilemma faced by many individuals. Aspiring homeowners often find themselves pondering on the question, how should I save for a house while still renting? This video aims to provide a comprehensive analysis of the factors to consider when saving for a house and the optimal balance between renting expenses and saving goals. If you guys don't know me, my name is Aaliyah M. Clark. I am a North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and Georgia real estate professional. If you guys are new here, thank you guys for for tuning into the video you guys are returning thank you guys for all the support let's go ahead and hop into the video so the first thing that i would like to go over are the pros of renting so the first thing the first pro is financial flexibility one of the significant advantages of renting is the flexibility it offers in terms of budgeting renters typically have fixed monthly payments allowing for a better control of expenses renting eliminates a high upfront cost associated with purchasing a property such as down payment and closing costs the second pro is no maintenance responsibilities. Another benefit of renting is the absence of maintenance responsibilities. In most cases, landlords or property management companies are responsible for addressing repairs, renovations, and maintenance issues. This can save renters time, effort, and money that would otherwise be spent on home repairs. So you know when you buy a home, you don't really have anybody to call on. You got to take care of yourself. The third pro is flexibility and mobility. Renting provides individuals with flexibility to relocate more easily, whether for work, family, or for personal reasons. Renters can move to a different area without the constraints of selling a property. This flexibility can be a great advantage for those who value changes in their living environment or frequently need to relocate due to work. So the fourth pro is access to amenities. Rental properties often come with access to various amenities such as gyms, pools, and community spaces, which may be financially burdensome to own for many homeowners. These amenities can contribute to a higher quality of life for renters at a fraction of the cost. So now let's go ahead and hop into the cons of renting. So the first con is the lack of equity building. One of the primary disadvantages of renting is the inability to build equity. Rent money is essentially a payment made towards someone else's ownership, providing no long-term financial benefit for the renter. Homeownership enables the accumulation of equity, which serves as an important asset for future financial goals. The second con is limited control over the property. As a renter, one may face certain restrictions imposed by landlords or property management. This can involve limitations on making modifications to the property or restrictions in pet ownership. Renters are often bound by terms outlined in the rental agreement, which may restrict their ability to fully personalize their living space. So you may not be able to get that, you know, pit bull that you want or that German shepherd that you want. You may not be able to paint the walls the way that you want to. You may not even be able to hang any TVs on the wall. So there might be some restrictions that are going to, you know, prevent you from making the home the way that you want to make the home. You have to abide by the property management's rules or the landlord's rules, unfortunately. Third con is uncertain tenancy. Another drawback of renting is the potential for uncertainty of tenancy. Renters are subject to decisions of landlords who may choose not to renew leases or raise rent prices. This lack of stability can lead to a sense of insecurity and may require frequent adjustments to one's living arrangement. So I remember <clears throat> when I lived in South Carolina, I was a fresh new airman, you know, able to move out of the dorms and I had lived in the apartment that I was in with my roommate for about a year and we were going to renew our lease we did end up renewing our lease but this was after I had asked the property management office like hey or the leasing office I said hey is the rent going to change and it ended up it was going to change like maybe like a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or so and they would not have told us that had I not asked so there are definitely some you know cons when it comes to those rent increases because you never know like how much it's really going to increase and then you might have to change like your entire budget just based off of that increase. The fourth con, it kind of goes hand in hand with the first con, but it is the inability of generating long-term wealth. Renting does not offer the opportunity to generate long-term wealth that home ownership can provide. While renting may seem financially feasible in the short term, home ownership often leads to wealth accumulation through poverty appreciation and potential tax benefits. When you're renting from someone, you're not doing anything but making those other people rich. It might be okay for a little bit of time, but ultimately you want your own income producing property or at least a, pro a property that you're putting money into yourself and the equity is being built up in it. That's why I said that it kind of goes hand in hand with the first con is, you know, you're not building any equity within like your own asset. You're putting equity into another person's asset. So understanding the importance of saving a house. Saving for a house is not merely a personal financial goal. It is a 
significant milestone for many individuals, encapsulating stability, security, and a long-term investment potential. Additionally, home ownership presents the advantage of building equity and escaping the fluctuations of the rental market. Hence, a pertinent saving plan is crucial to achieving this goal. So you need to evaluate your current financial situation. Before embarking on the journey of saving for a home, it is essential to evaluate one's current financial standing. This evaluation encompasses factors such as income, expenses, debt, and existing savings. By scrutinizing these elements, individuals can determine a realistic timeline for home ownership and set an achievable savings target. Okay, so let's get some balance here. While saving for a house, renting expenses occupy a significant portion of one's monthly budget. Striking a balance between rent and saving is essential to ensuring progress towards a goal of home ownership. It is necessary to identify potential areas where, where cost-cutting measures can be implemented without compromising one's quality of life or straining financial stability. Okay, so let's quickly go over the 530-20 rule. The 530-20 rule is a widely recognized guideline for budgeting that can serve as a helpful tool when allocating funds towards saving for a house. This rule suggests that 50% of one's income should go towards essential expenses, 30% towards personal expenses and lifestyle choices, and 20% towards savings. By adhering to this rule, individuals can effectively manage their finances while prioritizing saving for a home. So next, we need to create a comprehensive saving plan. Developing a sound saving plan is essential to track progress and stay motivated on the path of home ownership. This plan involves setting specific savings goals, identifying additional sources of income, and implementing a disciplined saving strategy. Utilizing tools such as automated transfers to a dedicated savings account or seeking professional financial advice further enhance the efficiency of the saving plan. So when you are thinking about, okay, how am I going to save for this home? One thing you might have to do is try to figure out a way to make more money. You should not, and this is me talking to you guys personally, not just like as a real estate professional or just as like an entrepreneur, you need to have more than one way of making money. So don't have one stream of income coming in thinking that, okay, I'm gonna get to this goal quickly with just this one stream. If you can figure out a way to have other streams of income coming in, then that will significantly help you when it comes to saving for a house because you have more money coming into that, that savings account. So you also need to ensure that you're monitoring and adjusting the saving strategy as necessary. To ensure continuous growth of savings, it is crucial to regularly assess the saving strategy and adjust it as necessary. Monitoring expenses, tracking savings progress, and making necessary modifications based on any changes in income or financial circumstances can allow individuals to stay on track and remain committed to their goal. So if you start making more money, put more money into the savings account. If you, you know, if there's like some unexpected changes that come along, adjust accordingly. You might have to push your time frame back just a tiny bit, but stay on track. Make sure that you are constantly checking to make sure that, you know, every month you're hitting your goals. I would, I used to go as far as to like have like one dedicated notebook to like my budget. And I would almost write out a budget for the entire year, for the entire 12 months. I would go January, February, March, April, May, obviously so on and so forth. And I would have the exact same budget laid out every single month. You guys know that I am prior Air Force. So me being in the military at some point, well, I'm still in the military as we speak, but I'm on my way out. When I was a young airman, I literally had, I remember it was this green, it was a green book and it had like some like blue little uh, purple stripes on it. And every month I would make sure I'm going through that budget. I'm paying all, I'm paying the bills that I need to pay and I'm putting the exact same amount of savings in my account every single month. I did that from the very time I moved into the dorms all the way until I moved into my first apartment, all the way until I moved out of that apartment and so on and so forth. I, <laughs> the only change as of right now is that I now own a rental property and I do it on Excel now, but I still do that exact same thing. And I can guarantee you that if you do that, you will see a significant change. Just keep track of it. You have to keep track of your finances. Have an allocated amount towards food. Have an allocated amount towards, you know, uh, gas or, you know what I mean? I used to take money. I would take $200 out every week. Now, mind you, I'm a single person. I don't have like, you know, children or anything like that. So, you know, if you do have children or, you know, other uh, people that are relying on you, then, you know, adjust accordingly. But what I did was every two weeks, because that's, you know, that's how we get paid in the military. I would take $200 out every two weeks. And that's what I would have to eat off of. That's what I was eating off of. And if I needed a little bit of money for that, then I had to adjust accordingly. But what I did, I knew I wasn't going to eat more than $200 
dollars especially if i was cooking at home i knew i wasn't going to eat more than 200 dollars um every two weeks so that's a hundred dollars a week i can't even imagine like what i would have spent you know too much money on maybe if i had like decided to treat myself and spent you know a bunch of money on like some seafood or something that might have pushed me over the edge but i planned for that so just make sure that you guys are staying on track and paying attention to your budget while saving for a house it is essential to consider other financial aspects such as emergency funds down payment requirements and long-term mortgage affordability these factors play a crucial role in the feasibility of purchasing a home and should not be overlooked saving for a house while renting is a delicate balancing act that requires careful financial planning and disciplined savings habits striking the right balance between rental expenses and saving targets is crucial to making progress towards home ownership by evaluating one's financial situation adhering to budgeting guidelines and creating a comprehensive saving plan in addition to regularly monitoring and adjusting the strategy individuals can inch closer towards their dream of owning a home ultimately the decision to transition from renting to home ownership must be based on careful consideration of personal circumstances financial readiness and long-term goals thank you guys for watching make sure to go ahead and like comment subscribe to the channel it would really help us reach more people i appreciate each and every single one of you and i'll catch you guys in the next video